Hello and welcome to another weekly tutorial. Today I wanted to show you how some tips and tricks for coloring on craft cardstock. It's definitely one of my favorite things to do, so I wanted to kind of show you how and show you my little tips. So first I'm going to start out by taking my circle nest abilities. This is the larger set. And notice how I keep mine on a magnet like this. It's just an Herbert and Gerbert magnet that we got as advertising. And it manages to keep them all in the little container. So I'm pulling out the biggest one and the third biggest one. And I'm going to cut a circle out of the craft, which will be my, ba my base of my colored image. And I'm also going to cut out a partial circle of that scrap of, cra of uh, cream paper at the top. Both of these papers are from Paper Train. So I'm going to cut out the craft and the cream with my Big Shot and there we have the little piece of cream as well and the little piece is only necessary because we're going to create a sentiment piece with an overlap. So you have the piece of Big Circle cut out now and now I'm going to line it up and cut out the side with a smaller circle. You'll see how this looks once I put it on the card. So here I'm going to show you. This is my card base. It is grass green Hero Hues cardstock by Hero, Heart, Hero Arts. And then this is what I cut out the circle. You can see I had to switch it around because I made it so that the circles would line up. And the smaller circle just kind of cut out a piece of it. So I put my peacock stamp on the piece of craft and I realized that I'm definitely going to need to use my stamp a jig because it's going to be a tight fit. So I pulled out my stamp a jig, got it stamped, had to do it a couple times because my desk had a little give in it. So I put a mouse pad under it and then it worked fine. And then I stamped it with some memento black ink. You can see it's a little fuzzy in the middle there. I didn't get quite a perfect impression, but that's okay. I wanted to show you that I go over my images with my Copic micro um, tip marker sometimes if it needs a little bit of extra touching up and it looks just as if I stamped it perfectly. So now I'm picking out my colors and I'm just going to pick out three colors that go pretty well together so I'm going to pull out this extra piece of craft paper so I know what they look like on it. Um, and I decided I want those two colors, the green and the teal, and then I'm going to try to find a green that's in between them. Finally decide that this one works. So I'm going to use these three. And I want one that blends pretty well between the lightest and the darkest. So I went and sharpened all my pencils. I always do that before I start coloring on craft. And then... I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and you'll be able to see me color. Here we go. So I have the darker color, the blue in this case. I'm going to start from the base of the neck and work up. I'm going to color really solidly towards the bottom and then kind of feather out towards like when I go towards the top. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the lightest color going down. So I'm coloring it completely towards the end and then kind of only coloring it about 50% once I get towards the middle. And then I'm going to go over with the middle tone and make it all blend together. And that's pretty much what I do for everything I color in with my Prismacolor pencils. I love my Prismacolor pencils. I think they were a great investment. I have the set of 48 and it only cost me about $30, I think. I just used a coupon at Michael's and I thought it was a good art school investment and I'm really glad I bought them because they're just fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and color the blue. Now you'll notice that I'm coloring over the dots that appear in the stamped image, but that's okay. You can still kind of see them, but when you use opaque colored pencils like this, especially with pencils that have a lot of white in them like this blue does, you tend to lose the black lines a lot. But I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. So it's okay. So now I'm just going to blend it 
This time I'm actually blending it with the medium second instead of the light. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. I just kind of switch it up and do whatever is appropriate for the situation. And then I'm going to go over the light last. And you should know that whatever color you do last is going to probably show the most because sometimes they do go over each other and sometimes one color does dominate. So just keep that in mind. You can always go back over. So just like I'm doing right here, I'm going back over with the dark blue and I'm kind of just filling in any areas that look like they quite didn't get as much coverage as I wanted. So now I'm just going to speed through this. I'm just going to go over and color the bottom part of the peacock. And then I'm going to go through and color the dots in his tail. And I'm just going to color the inside yellow, or lime green, the middle, the teal, and then the outside, the blue. Just in the same pattern I did before, only these have kind of lines to define the areas. So, we have our image colored, and now we're going to go back over with the micron liner and just go over all of the lines that are still showing through because we want the image to be nice and crisp. So, don't be afraid, just go for it and go over the lines as you see them through the color pencil. It doesn't show up very well on camera here, but you can definitely still see them in person. And then I'm going to go over through the feathers too because I thought that they didn't quite come through as much as I wanted them to. So I'm going to go over that and I'm going to do that to the whole body anywhere where there was color that I wasn't that was covering up the black lines. So I went over the body and some of the circles in the tail and yeah so it's a finished colored image. I'm going to go back and color the beak a little bit of blue to make it pop against the lime green and there we go so I'm going to get ready to put my sentiment on there so I line it up and I decide that the best way I'm going to end up adhering it with dimensional adhesive but I'm going to adhere it with um, repositional repositionable at first because I want to be able to see if I'm stamping the sentiment straight since it's a circle it'd be straight for the circle but maybe not in relation to the peacock. So I put it in place, cut apart this birthday boy stamp from the birthday sentiments, birthday saying step set from Hero Arts and I'm st stamping the words separately and I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I actually went and I did this with my stamp -a majig and it just it moved and I got really frustrated so I just flipped over and re-stamped it. And you just kind of have to look through. That's what I love about clear stamps. You can always see where you're stamping. And that worked out pretty well. And so now I'm going to take off my sentiment and re-adhere it with some dimensional adhesive. You can see it's kind of popping up there. And now I'm going to go back over and put some rhinestones. These are from Hero Arts, and these are actually really round. They don't have any facets on them like regular rhinestones do. So I wanted to use them because they're more like teardrops. So I just cut them apart to make sure the glue was separated, and then put them on. Now I'm just kind of lining this up on the card, seeing where I want to put it. Right now this is a standard size card. I was thinking about making it a square card, but I decided against it, and I decided that I wanted to use my embossing folder on the background. So what I'm going to do is line up my embossing folder and then run it through. And I always run it through horizontally like this because that's the best way to do it. I cut off the end because the embossing folder doesn't quite reach the end. And now I'm just going back over and sanding it with my basic gray precision file set. If you have sandpaper, that would work perfectly fine for this too. I just couldn't find my sandpaper. So I'm just rubbing the surface really lightly. Hero Arts paper is really cool for this because it has a white core. So when you sand it, the white core comes through and the dots really pop up. 
So now I'm adhering my image to the top of the card, just centering it and using some pop adhesive. And then I'm adding some silk ribbon. This is from Paper Tray Ink. And what I'm going to do, I learned this trick from Christina Werner. You can just cut a little slit in the side of the card in order to uh, uh, let your ribbon through the card so you can tie a bow around the front. And I really wanted to do this for this card, so I left this whole part in so you can see it. So I just pulled it through. And now I'm going to tie a bow. And once I have that bow all set, I'm just going to cut off the ends. And I put that on the right side to kind of balance out the sentiment because I thought the white on the top left corner would look pretty good, kind of balanced with the bottom left hand corner with something white in it as well. So I'm looking at the card and I decided that I wanted to use a corner rounder. And how, rounding the corners really gave it that finishing touch that I was looking for. So I used the half inch of my We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper. I love this thing. Obviously, if you looked at my blog at all, you know I run the corners on everything. And so now I'm just doing that on the front and the back. And sometimes if it doesn't quite get a little corner like I want it to and it's not perfectly clean, I'll just go back and chomp it again. You can never really mess up with the corner chomper. So this is the final card. For more information, check out my blog on October 3rd, 2010. Thank you for watching.